just in time. Gotta love Georgia. Good. Don't have to work on a white car. Just in time. Let's go ahead and hook the computer up and check this cam sensor because the car started twice perfectly, which means it might be connected. And then if it's staying on, we'll jiggle some wires and see if we can make it go off. Otherwise, I don't know if it's doing it, we're gonna start by replacing it one more time because we have one over there on Chris's motor that we can use. And if that doesn't fix the issue and it's still doing it, then we know because look, cam sensor number one got damaged either in the machine shop or from me taking off the head. So it was toast. This one, number two, very well could have been faulty and causing this flashing issue. We're not 100% sure. Only way we can truly find out is to throw a third one on. And if the third one doesn't, does the same thing as the second one, then cool. Start shaking harnesses, pull it out, chasing wires, all that terrible stuff. <sighs> Let's just pray it's a bad cam sensor and a bad cam sensor. Cause I don't want to pull the harness. I want to go driving this weekend, you know? But either way, let's get started. We'll fix it when we fix it, right? Okay. Okay. Just took it up and down the road for a while. I'm realizing something. So with this new cam sensor, if we cut the car on and then we see trigger signal two active and we slap start, it will hold it the whole time I'm going up and down the road. Fine. If I let it disappear and then press start, I don't get it and I don't get it the whole time. So let's go ahead and try this. Ready? ECU on, trigger signal two. Got him right. Now I'll shut it off and we'll cut the car on. We'll wait. There's trigger signal two. Yes, it's there. It's gone now. Start without it and it will never keep it. So all we have to do now is cut it on while trigger two is active and it'll stay on. All right, here we go. There it is. That's good. Go and I'll do a scope real quick. Scope. Cool. All right, we're back at the shop. I know, I wasn't doing any of it with Gustavo. Say hello. Hello. And we decided to take some more stabs at this uh, cam sensor issue. After talking to some people, we decided that uh, that ground right there is probably pretty garbage, seeing as how it's supposed to be on like a strut tower with a really good grounding point and it's on a thin firewall. I think I'm 99% sure that that's the ground for the cam sensor. So, better safe than sorry. We're going to swap that out real quick. I dug up some extra wire I had laying around. It just might be long enough. It's like a 4AG and then we have some little crimps for it. We're looking for a grommet that fits the right size. And then we are going to, just since we're in testing mode, I know it won't be the prettiest, but we'll hook to our best grounding location right here and then we will run it through the firewall somewhere, like right here, down here, or maybe here, and into the cab, and connect it to those wires there with a good bolt. And fingers crossed that, I mean, it's not permanent, like I will do a grounding block, something like that, make it look nicer, make it safer. But let's just try and give it a more solid grounding point and see what happens. Yep, looks good. 
that angle is going to work right here so that when it turns, you're not twisting the cable at all. That's all I'm focusing on is I don't want to have to like twist this cable when the time comes to hook it up. Let's see if I can get this in here without messing it up. The camera died right when I clipped that one, but there we go. Nice and tight. Go ahead and head down and hook it up right, with all my ground. Cool, nice and tight. Make sure we have a good ground. Looks pretty good. So connected the new cable, uh, turned the car on and it still did its issue where you have to do it quickly. Of course, we're still hunting an issue, but I want to show you what fixing that ground accomplished because you can immediately tell, and I'll put up another screen here for reference, but you can immediately tell how much less noise there is in the trigger scope for the crank sensor. Uh, that was probably the reason why. We had to turn the scope up uh, at the higher RPMs with the previous tuner because uh, there was just a lot of noise from a bad ground. And then trigger sensor working great as well. That being said, you can tell that it's a little bit less noise once it's up. On to the next though, because we're still gonna have to fight this issue. I'm waiting to hear from Link. We're gonna do a continuity test on the wires, but everything seems to be just fine. So who knows what's next? Uh, let's wait and see what Andy over at Link ECU tells us. Still scope test showed that the cam sensor was actually faulting. So that means there's a small chance that it's actually the two bad Bremi replacement sensors. Uh, I don't believe that they're both bad, but I went ahead and pulled this Bremi one out anyways. And of course it looks perfect. It senses perfect when I you know, was putting magnet to it, everything there works. So it's not like it's failed, but something's causing these Bremi sensors to act up. So I went ahead, like I said, pulled out that cam sensor and got myself an OEM, OEM, OEM cam sensor, like an actual from BMW, not a Bremi replacement, a BMW M50TU cam sensor. It was about $50 more than the previous one, but Ian was awesome to warranty these ones so I can just give these back to knock off the price like that. And what's an extra $50 just to say, hey Link, it is an OEM sensor with an OEM harness and everything works in terms of the continuity and the oscilloscope showed that it's actually failing still. What's my next step? Maybe my next step is throw Chris's ECU in it. I honestly think I'm gonna build his ECU and put it in if uh, this doesn't work and I can't get it sorted. So I can't start it yet. The exhaust is off of it still. I'm getting a, basically it's an oil pressure feed regulator for my turbo line. Uh, just to try and help with it pushing too much pressure on it. Uh, these pulsars don't like that. Uh, we're going to see if that fixes my core before we put a new core in it. We can still see if we, if we see anything different at all when we cut the car on. So yeah, I know it's still doing up. Oh. Showed it for a sec there. Eh. Screw it. Let's just put the exhaust back on it real quick. Right? Yeah, all right, let me just throw the exhaust back on because uh, I had it off to check the turbo and then we'll, we'll give it a start. All right. Probably gonna do the same thing. It'd be crazy if it didn't after how it acted right there. All right, so let's do a quick, let's do a quick start. Neutral, of course. Try again, huh? All right. Accessories on. Wait for the ECU to, wait for this ECU to connect. All right, there we are. No trigger signal. We've been sitting here for quite some time without any trigger signal.
quick connect, trigger signal on. Wait for it, okay, no. Now in theory it shouldn't start and bang. Awesome, awesome. I think it's fixed. <laughs> well, guys, there's your answer, you know? We started thinking, bad cam sensor, replace it. That cam sensor didn't work. I started checking wires, right? We checked ground, perfect resistance, no issue. Power, full 14 volts. Signal, full five volts. Everything on the wiring harness was healthy. I had people watching it on FaceTime and I was just shaking the harness. And still, no issues at all. The car's wiring is fine. So we put a second cam sensor in it. Same issues, because we warrantied a Bremi replacement, which is a certified BMW sensor, but it's not like I'm buying it at AutoZone, you know? That's what BM people use at dealers and stuff. But it wasn't OEM BMW. Now we know, guys, it's part number 12, 14, 1, 7, 4, 0, 383. But it's a BMW 383 because I remember that 383 being the part number I gave when we end up getting a Bremi. Maybe we just figure out that, maybe do one more coolant pressure test or something. No, I think it's dyno time. So I'm gonna go ahead and call Doug and uh, I will get this car finished up and off the lift with an oil change. We will do some driving up down the road, load it on the trailer, and uh, we'll head on over to his shop this week. We'll run over to Matt at Evolved real quick. He's got my oil and that turbo pressure regulator for the feed line. We'll pick those up, take a look at what he's doing and uh, head on back over here, wrap up and put it on the ground and go beat it up and down the road. The people I wanna thank for helping me with this cam sensor, like there's a ton of them. David May over at Solo and Ian, of course, for the help with the sensors. But David gave me an oscilloscope, a bunch of advice, was about to come over here today and help, like he was, really all over it. Captain K. Manji, uh, he probably won't even watch these, but he was a huge help as well. Uh, I bothered him more than most people. Nick Collier uh, in California, who came to the trip to the pond with us. I bothered him more than I should have. Bug a DBW, hell, this will be the third time on the dyno because of these issues, so I'm sorry to him. Uh, there's a lot of people who are helping me with this. I'm sorry, Charles Nichols, uh, he helped me a ton with this. I mean, we had a lot of hands in this and everybody was genuinely like, mm wiring issue. And then once I probed everything, everyone's like, mm, ECU issue. And then I'm like, well, we uh, talked with Link and they've got a lot of really good points as to why it's not. Uh, I almost put Chris's ECU in it, but David May said, try one more, make sure it's truly OEM. So did Alex. They both said that. Yeah. All it took was <laughs> an actual OEM cam sensor. Now we know why one third of the E36s on track that are Link ECUs are popping and banging when they're starting. And it's because they're running a Bremi or a Bosch cam sensor instead of a true OEM replacement. It's that easy. Um, wow, cool. Let's go change the oil. We'll get it on the ground. We'll go drive it around.